All right, so I figure I'd give you guys a final tour of the year in my greenhouse. I'll show you what's going on in the garden, too. I'm going to shoot a couple of videos on the vegetables I got growing out there. I did plant them a little late, so... In here, as you can see, I still got beans growing, and I still got many other things still growing in here. Temperatures have been getting down to the, I would say, it, well, it's definitely been frozen overnight several times already. Maybe at least a dozen times we've been below 32 degrees. So, most everything outside, outside of the brassicas and the mustards, everything else is pretty much dead. But as you can see in a greenhouse, if you have a greenhouse, uh, things will live much longer and later into the season. So over here I have the giant red celery still growing. I'm going to move this pot outside because I'm not going to be able to water it in the winter. So it should live through the winter. Look at that. I got more fennel coming up. Fennel is a cold weather plant. They like cold weather, so they do pretty good outside this time of the year. Uh, you can see I got the garlic is still growing. And I don't know. I might let these winter over, see what happens. I don't think they've really formed any bulbs, so if I dig them up now, I'm really not going to get anything from it. Plus, I do have garlic to use and eat, so not really interested in digging it up. But I do want to try to transport that outside and see if it winters over. Uh, garlic doesn't a lot of times winter over very good. Sometimes it winters, sometimes it don't. So uh, I got the Swiss chard still growing fine. I'm going to probably move that outdoors, uh, even though it's got its roots deeply embedded into the bed below. So here's more garlic I got growing. I might shoot a video on this. I don't know. Uh, the scapes are still good. You can still eat the scapes, the garlic greens and stuff like that. You can eat those. Those are perfectly fine. They actually go pretty good in the salad. This is called the lychee tomato. The lychee tomatoes are still living in here pretty fine. They're still putting out tons of lychee tomatoes right here. And I got plenty of them on there. In fact, there's so many coming off this plant that I'm not even eating them. They're just falling to the ground at this point right now. I mean, you can probably see some down there. You know, there's some lychee tomatoes down there. Some regular tomatoes. The Everglades tomatoes do pretty good. As long as if you keep them in a the greenhouse, they'll grow late into the year. I mean, I might even get into November, December. It really depends. Once the temperatures start dropping below, I'd say 25 on a, on a daily basis all day long, not all these plants will be dead. So there is a point in which everything dies. But if you're looking to extend your growing season, the greenhouse is definitely a good way to go. As you can see, I got tons of the Everglade tomatoes pretty much growing everywhere. So there's Everglade tomatoes there. And I have this thing. I don't know what this is. I think it's the Totatum or something like that. I think that's what it is. It's still alive, still growing. It's loaded with downy mildew. So I should rip it out, but there's still a couple of, couple of them down here that are still growing. Yeah, it's a Tatum, but it's different shape this year. It's strange. I don't know. It's elongated and not round. Also, I have a couple regular tomatoes still forming tomatoes on here. And I'll probably not eat, waste my time even eating them. But there are tomatoes still coming out late in the year. Like up here, you can see I still have tomatoes. So there's still tomatoes coming out. But I mainly, right now, I'm foraging on the... Everglade tomatoes because I got so many of them. I also have the uh, sunberries still coming out by the tons. They're great to eat this time of the year because it produces so many of them. And I also have what's really doing good in the greenhouse. And I didn't plant these this year. They kind of came up as a volunteer on their own and are coming up everywhere. And that is the, let's see if I can grab one. Did it fall? That is the Mexican Sour Gherkin. I love these things. I could eat these things all day long. They're really good. They're bite-sized. I don't have to worry about 
chomping into a huge cucumber, you know, I could just munch on these. And they're great. They're, they're very satisfying. Yes, the beans are still producing. A lot of them got mold on them this year. That's never happened before, but this year was such a wet year that the mold literally went out of control. So everything was getting mold on it. But as you can see, most of my beans here are perfectly fine. So some of them got the mold. I'll toss those away and I'll keep all the beans that form on these pods. And of course, uh, beans are like these beans, these Romano beans are like a big seller on my website. A lot of people come to buy these beans. So I want to make sure I always have a good supply. And believe me, there's enough beans on here for me to supply hundreds of people with beans. There's plenty of beans. And once they get like this, then I, you know, I, I leave them over winter out here. It's good to let your beans just sit over winter out in the cold. And then when spring comes, they're really acclimatized to your area and they're really healthy very strong as you all these beans that you see in here i did not plant these come up as volunteers every year because they fall as i pick the beans a lot of times the pod will break open and the beans will fall down i can't get them all i'm not going to dig through the soil dig every bean out so when they hit the ground they stay and they come up every year so over here, you can see I got more tomatoes. Now, this particular tomato here isn't a pure Everglades tomato. I do believe that it crossed over with the golden currant tomato. And I got something different coming out of this plant. So this is definitely not a Everglades tomato. It looks like it, but believe me when I tell you, it's not. Everglades tomatoes are more pink. They don't get red like this. Very sweet, very delicious variety of tomato. Tastes like a... Um, like a regular tomato would taste. That one's split. I'm not going to eat that. Yeah, if they split, I don't waste my time with them. Here's another one. So what I do is I come out here. You know, every few days I'll come out here. I'll pick a handful of these little tomatoes and I'll munch them down. Either out here or I'll bring them in and make a salad with it. Now here's an Everglade tomato. You can see. They're very big. They're nice and pink. And these things are absolutely delicious, especially this time of the year when it gets cold. These tomatoes are very, very delicious. Excellent tomatoes. I love eating these tomatoes when it gets cold. During the warmer months, I have all the other tomatoes, so I don't waste time with them. But this time of the year, this tomato plant is producing tons and tons of tomatoes. They got plenty of tomatoes all over my greenhouse from this variety that I can forage on and munch on and stuff like that. Now, also, what else is producing... Uh, food for me this time of year in a greenhouse is my Romano beans as I showed you and they're still I like to eat them about this size and as you can see I got a nice little snack right here and I can easily pick another tomato with that or several tomatoes I'm not going to do it on camera but you know you grab a tomato right and then you take a bite of your bean it's absolutely delicious. It's just like eating a salad. But yeah, I'm still getting beans. I'm still getting uh, some berries. Those are a nice little snack. And in this side of the greenhouse, as you can see, I still have pepper plants out here. I can't bring all my pepper plants in, so I am leaving some of them go. But yeah, they're still making peppers. In fact, some of these are getting flowers on them and putting out peppers. I really hate to leave this one out here. Where is it? Where are you? Uh, it's up here somewhere. You'll see peppers dangling down. Okay, that's the devil's tongue pepper. And this thing is really producing a tremendous amount of peppers this year. I got so many off this plant, it's ridiculous. So I'm really not wanting to uh, let my, my devil's tongue go this year, but I can't bring everything in. I just simply don't have the room for it all. I'm, I'm totally packed in. In fact, I got more plants indoors now than I plan to bring in. I packed them in big time this year. So I probably got over 100 plants already indoors. So I'm not going to bring those in. You know, I'm, I'm just going to have to let them go, unfortunately. I want to bring them in, but it's, you know, I have to prioritize what I can winter over this year. So devil's tongues are still coming out. I don't know. We got some red habaneros over there. We have a mojo pepper up here, and I don't know what variety it is. So I'm not going to bring it in because 
I, I lost the tag to it, and again, I don't know what it is, and it's just not worth me growing it out, but it's a beautiful... I did save seeds from it, so I could always grow it again. It looks just like a Buccalochia, but I'm pretty sure it's not a Buccalochia. It, it's not from the plant profile, because the plant, you can see, it's got a black stem on it and stuff, dark on the leaves, black on the leaves. So it's definitely not a Buccalochia, but it has... Buccalochia characteristics, as you can see, a beautiful warding on the pepper and everything. So, yeah, I still got peppers coming in. Still have hot ones. I have those indoors, though. And we got our fig tree here. And unfortunately, I am not going to bring this in this year. I really should. I really should repot this and bring it in. But again, I don't have room. And, you know, when I relocate, I'll just buy fig trees wherever it is I relocate. And I'll do a lot more research as to the variety of fig that I want to grow and everything. But for me to bring this thing in, I mean, you can see how massive it is. I'd have to cut it all the way down. I guess I could. I, I don't know. I'll think about it. I still got a few, you know, I still got a few weeks left before, it, you know, it gets that cold where everything dies off. So I've got some wild plants that came up. These are just pepper plants. I let, when they land on, when the seeds land on the ground, I let them grow. So I got some wild pepper plants coming up here. All over, actually. I mean, you, you can see I got pepper plants. I always spit my seeds out, so a lot of times they come up, and I let them grow throughout the year, and, you know, I'll get all kinds of little oddballs come out of it. Here's more pepper plants I'm going to let go. There's my uh, my Vene Valencia Pride Mango. I had this for a couple of years growing in a pot. I decided that I'm not going to pursue that anymore. But, yeah, that thing will just keep growing and growing, and... It'll go forever, basically, and if it's going to put out fruit for you, if you live in Florida, that'd be good for you, a good little project for you. Here's the um, dwarf tamarillo, and as you can see, it's still alive. It's still doing good. It's still putting out fruits, believe it or not. I mean, we're already, I think today is the 6th of November, something like that. So this is already the 6th of November, and this thing is still punching out fruits. You can see up there, you can see it's still putting out those little fruits. They're falling on the ground because I'm not really coming in here every day to pick them. Because i got to get on a ladder and go all the way up there. I mean, there's, there's clusters of them still on here. And these things are absolutely delicious. I've really grown to love them quite a bit. So it's really going to hurt for me to leave these plants in here because now i got to start from seed again. And it takes two years for the plant to grow. And I don't know. I'm not sure where I'm moving to, so if it's a warmer climate, then I can do a permaculture garden and maybe do it from there. I, I really don't know. But this plant does not like the cold weather. And it's an unfortunate thing that I have to go through bringing it in every year. It's just kind of a pain in the neck for me. Some more plants. Got the uh, Mojo Blue Ghost. I'm going to leave that one out there. That's a two-year-old. These are all two-year-old plants here. Here's the uh, Yaki Blue Fawn. Shake it, you can see all the leaves coming down. It's pretty much done, but if I bring this in, it'll start growing again. It'll live. It's just, it's in a big pot. I don't have room for it. Same thing with the Trinidad Dogla. I got, there's, I think those are both reds, but there used to be a brown in there too. Uh, they died. So now all I'm left with is the Trinidad Dogla red. I'm not going to bring that in. That's like a three-year-old plant. That one's pretty old. Same thing with this one in the back. That's like a uh, two-year-old plant there. The, the, the dragon's tongue, or the devil's tongue over there, that one's like three years old. That's really going to hurt for me to leave that one here. I should cut all those stems off and just bring in the base, but I, I'm just loaded more tonight. I, in the spring, I may end up having to get rid of them all anyway because I, I can't take them with me where I'm going. So These are the extra dwarf pak choy. And I let them go to seed because I want to get seed from them. You can see there's pods. So I will get some seed for next year. I'm going to leave them in here to the winter. They're going to die over the winter because I'm not going to be able to water them. Though they might winter over, so it's hard to say. I, you know, If I put them outside, they might winter over fine. But I'm not going to be able to water them in here. So I'm not sure if I'm going to put them outside. I'll show you what I got still going outside.
Okay, so this is my radicchio. Uh, it didn't go to head, believe it or not. And part of that's because I just simply planted too late in the season. I really should have started these somewhere around June or July, and I waited all the way till I think mid-August when I did my my plant outs for these things. And so this particular variety, it was a little too late for it. Though I'm not sure if it'll winter over. Plants, these from last year, didn't winter over from last year, but... I'm going to do separate videos on this, and I'll do a taste test for you on the uh, chicory. I, I don't remember the name. I think it's this one right here. The Rosa di Verona Dragon Radicchio. That's what it's called. So I guess maybe I'll do a taste test on that. I don't know if it's going to winter over. I probably could bring that in and put it in a little pot and bring it in and winter it indoors. But... It's too much. I have way too much indoors right now, and it's I'm overloaded as it is. So, I'd love to do it, but I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Here are all my um, here's here's one of my dwarf uh, pak choys, extra dwarf pak choy, and it's grown outdoors. It's really like in the cold weather. The problem is, is the the uh, cabbage loopers are literally destroying whatever's left. Even though it's freezing and cold out, they're still eating my plants away like you wouldn't believe like here's one right here uh, I dropped them I dropped them they're very hard they stick to the leaf so if you don't get a good grip on them you'll drop them and I like to feed them to my fish but this time of the year it's probably not even worth it these are my I forgot it, it's a mustard but I forgot which mustard this is this is the Chinese mustard I think I believe it's just regular Chinese mustard and this might or might not winter over. I do not know at this point. So I have to let them go and then see how they do uh, through the winter and see if they still stay alive. If they do, then I will have mustard and mustard seed for next year because these will bolt by next year. And these are just some random plants I got left on, on the uh, grown on the outside. This is the um, Russian kale, red Russian kale. Got a couple of them I got growing over here. All my tomatoes are all dead. There's a couple of, you know, tomatoes still hanging around. But that's it here. And, you know, I got I moved some of my strawberries over, which I'm going to put in that little bed right here. I'm going to dig that dirt out, and I'm going to put new soil down on there and plant my strawberries in that patch. I'm going to get rid of my um, asparagus that's in here, the bed, and I'm just going to plant strawberries or something in there. But here you can see these came up on their own because they were growing wild. That is the bronze fennel, as you can see. And yes, the bronze fennel will head. If you grow it this time of the year, in fact, it's not a big, it, this one didn't actually form a big head. But if you let the bronze fennel grow late into this year, like you start your bronze fennel late, you'll end up with a good head. Wow, I can't even pull that out. And this is good stuff, too, to eat, you know. Um, all my grapevines are pretty much done. So I'm going to prune those back either soon or I'll wait to spring to prune them. It's usually best to prune them in spring. So this is what's going on in my outdoor garden. And I'm kind of just letting it go for the winter. Just going to let it go foul, fallow for the winter. And hopefully... Uh, these will live, and I'll be able to get fresh greens from it. Those are dinosaur kales. I think these are collards. I'm not sure what these are. They're broccoli, so hopefully I get broccoli early in the season next year. Again, I planted most of the stuff a little too late. Tried to uh, hedge my bed a little late in the season. Kind of foolish to do it, but yeah, it is what it is, right? It's part of the fun of gardening. As you can see, the cabbage loopers are still eating my brassicas even into the freezing weather. There's one there and there's one here. So, yeah, your, your, your brassicas aren't going to be safe from these insects even this late in the year. So, unless you grow it indoors, you can control it. But out here, the, the these insects 
all the way to the end of the year, they will survive and chew your garden to shreds. Now this is called the uh, Chinese Empress or Emperor Heading Mustard. It's basically a mustard that forms a head and it's a very beautiful form of mustard which I really really like. The taste is a little different so I am going to do a video taste test on this and uh, give you an idea what it tastes like but it's a very beautiful forming mustard. It makes this really gorgeous looking head and it's not like a head of lettuce. This is different. This looks different. So I'm trying to get one so I can show you the bottom of it. You can see it's a beautiful head down here. This is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to try to let these winter over hopefully and the winter won't destroy it too much but they'll bolt in spring and I'll get seed from them so but they're a, they're a really nice head uh, of mustard. I'm going to do a video on these next. Maybe I'll pull one of them up just to show you the shape. And kind of looks like a seashell when you, when you look at it from the side. And I have the other. This is another form of radicchio, but it's not really radicchio. It's called chicory. So this is a form of chicory, which is a heading version of chicory, which is like lettuce, but it is tangy. So I will do a video on that one as well. And I got more either broccolis or kales or collards over here growing. Unfortunately, as you can see on here, like right here, I, I'm looking at my camera, I don't even see it. But right here, you can see the cabbage looper. See them? That's a big one there. There's another one there. They're all over. And I picked hundreds of these cabbage loopers off of this already. They literally eat, ate my crops to, you know, if they didn't interfere with my crops, I'd probably have pretty nice sized plants, but they literally ate my plants down to the ground. So it's kind of depressing because I'm trying to grow food for the winter and I can't do it with these insects. They're just completely uncontrollable. There's no real way to deal with them. And the cabbage loopers are also eating my, you can see what they did to my mustards. I mean, they literally ate my mustards to shreds. There's nothing... The plant can't develop enough energy when it when these insects do this. The plant can't develop enough food and energy to overwinter. So then the plants end up dying. You can't, you can't, you can't, if I come in here and I cut these plants all the way down to the bottom and just leave the root, that won't come up next year because the plant needed that leafy green all the way up until that frost day. It's, you don't do that if you're trying to get the plants to come up the next year. As you can see, all my tomatoes are all dead. I should come in here and clean this out. I don't feel like wasting time with it, though. Right now, I might just leave it like this, and I'll just clear it out in spring. And I got the catnip is coming up. I got more lemon balm growing. I'm going to get rid of that lemon balm this year. That thing is an absolute monster. It's got to go. I got my, um, my true lavender there. You can see my bronze fennel is completely done. And I'm going to collect seed maybe today. So I have fresh seed for you. For brown fennel. And these are very healthy seeds. And they are very viable because my brown fennel is now starting to spread. And it's coming up all over my garden. You can see all the little plants coming up all over my garden. And even outside the garden. They're just coming up everywhere. So the brown fennel is beginning to spread. But I love brown fennel so I don't mind it. And, of course, I cut all my raspberry bushes down, and next year will be a whole new thing. I got some voluntary um, uh, parsnips still coming up. And here's my sage, broadleaf sage. This isn't white sage, this is broadleaf sage. But you can you burn this pretty much the same way as white sage and still get the same kind of an effect from it. So this plant is very healthy. So I definitely want to keep this one. This one's like, I don't know, two or three years old now. And it just keeps coming up every year. It, it's a perennial, so it doesn't die. And it's a wonderful herb to have, especially if you're into smudging and stuff like that. This is a great plant for that. It's got a very nice scent to it if you want to make soaps and stuff like that. So you can use it for that as well. Kind of, It's kind of potent like lavender. Lavender has a very potent odor to it when you rub the leaf. So it's kind of like lavender, but it smells like sage. So there is a difference.
I really like sage a lot growing it. I don't use it too much in cooking, but I like to use it for aromatherapy and a lot of different things like that. So it's a very nice plant to have. You can smoke this as well if you have issues with bronchitis and things like that. So it's got a lot of uses, but if you don't grow sage, I recommend you do. Find a, you know, find an area of your yard to make a perennial bed and put this in it. It'll come up every year as you see here. And it just produces so much. So much leaves come off of this. It's it's amazing. So, and that's about it. That's that's all I really got to show you right now for the outdoor garden. As you can see, I dumped all my soil out here. I'm going to let that winter over. It'll revitalize the soil. I'm going to I'm going to turn that soil back into my my bed next year, and I'm going to plant plants out here. Hopefully, I can grow some decent stuff next year rather than. Uh, you know, because last year I didn't really put any soil in here. I just reused the old soil. Even though that's old potting soil, it's still good for your garden out here. That It's perfectly fine. Your plants will grow amazing in that stuff next year. And besides, I only grew tomatoes in this soil. So it's the soil will balance itself out over the winter. But don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.